Welcome to Dermatology Explained. Today's video presentation is on pityriasis rosea. This is a video as part of our Papular Squamous Disorders video series. Pityriasis rosea is a common acute self-limited papular squamous eruption that favors otherwise healthy adolescents and young adults. It is characterized by a distinctive skin eruption with minimal constitutional symptoms. Pityriasis rosea means rose-colored scale. It often begins as a herald patch, followed by scaly oval patches on the trunk and proximal extremities in a classic Christmas tree appearance, as seen here on the image on the right-hand side. In most cases, it spontaneously resolves, which provides great consolation to the patient. Although the classic presentation is readily recognized, atypical forms may present a greater challenge to the clinician. The exact cause of pityriasis rosea is not known. A viral etiology has been postulated, but this remains unproven. Most recently, attention has focused on the human herpes virus 7 or HHV7, and to a lesser extent, human herpes virus 6, HHV6. A possible association may also exist between HHV8 and H1N1 influenza A virus. Proponents of the viral etiology suggest that the prodromal symptoms experienced by some patients, as well as the clustering of cases seen, and the almost complete absence of recurrent episodes, supports the theory of an immunologic defense against an infectious agent, which supports a viral etiology. There have also been reports of some drugs associated with pityriasis rosea, including gold, captopril, barbiturates, depenicillamine, and clonidine. In terms of the epidemiology, the approximate incidence of pityriasis rosea ranges from 0.5% to 2%. There are slightly more cases associated with females compared to males. The majority of cases are aged 10 to 35 years of age, and pityriasis rosea rarely presents before two years of age. There is no racial predilection noted. Some authors report a modest seasonal variation with peaks in the spring and fall. In terms of the classical features, although classic pityriasis rosea is usually most easily recognized, the more unusual variants can be more challenging to diagnose. The pityriasis rosea rash typically lasts six to eight weeks, but can last up to five months. In 50% of cases, the initial presentation is a herald patch, which precedes the entire eruption by hours to days. The herald patch is a lesion that is usually larger and may be situated on the thigh or upper arm, trunk or neck typically. It is rarely on the face, scalp, penis, palm or sole. The herald patch is sharply defined, it is an erythematous or salmon colored pink oval round plaque that is soon covered by fine scale. It is slightly raised with an advancing edge. It is typically two to four centimeters in size, but this can be quite variable and it can be up to 10 centimeters in size. In rare cases, there may be multiple herald patches in the same patient. The herald patch has a central fine scale and the edge has a more prominent collarette of scale with a free edge that is inward pointing. Approximately 5% of patients may experience a mild prodrome with headache, fever, arthralgias, or general malaise. On occasion, the herald patch appears simultaneously with a widespread eruption. Over the next few days, the eruption progresses. After an interval of usually between five to 15 days, the general eruption appears in crops, often in two to three day intervals over a period of 10 days. The classic eruption comprises of discrete oval lesions dull pink in color and covered by fine, dry, silvery gray scales. The center tends to be clear, 
and may have a wrinkled atrophic appearance with a marginal collaret of scale attached peripherally with a free edge of the scale pointing inwardsly. The long axes of, the le of these lesions characteristically follow the lines of cleavage parallel to the ribs in a Christmas tree pattern distribution, predominantly on the upper chest and back. Other sites include the trunk, neck, arms and legs, as well as the face and scalp. There are reports of involvement of the palms, but these are very exceptional cases. Pitoriasis rosea may also present with oral lesions, which comprise of ill-defined red patches with some disquamation or punctate hemorrhages or bullae. Exceptionally, there may be lesions on the vulva as well. The pitoriasis rosea lesions commonly resolve after six to eight weeks. However, some may persist for as long as five months. There may be temporary hyper or hyperpigmentation, but they usually the lesions vanish without any residue pigmentary changes. In 25% of patients, the pruritus can range from mild to quite severe and bothersome for the patient. The atypical forms of pityriasis rosea are potentially more challenging to diagnose. Here are a list of some clinical variants of pityriasis rosea that have been reported. These include absent or non-detected hair patch, unilateral, inverse, acral, limb girdle, mucosal, localized, and giant. In terms of morphological variations, this includes papillar or urticarial, papillovesical, vesicular, purpuric, erythema multiforme-like, follicular, pustular, blaschoid, and pityriasis rosea circinata et marginata or vidal. Pityriasis rosea circinata et marginata or vidal is regarded as a special form of pityriasis rosea and is mainly seen in adults. The lesions are few and large and are often localized to one region of the body, especially the axilla or groin areas. They tend to become confluent and may persist for several months. Rarely, this form may follow a typical generalized pityriasis rosea, but usually occurs alone. The following slides will show some example cases of variants of pityriasis rosea. On the left-hand side here, we see examples of hero patch in atypical locations, including the sole of a foot, as well as on the upper proximal thigh areas. In the central aspect of the screen, we see examples of inverses pityriasis rosea. On the top, lesions distributed on the face and neck, and on the bottom are lesions in the axilla. On the right-hand side are examples of Pityriasis rosea involving the extremities, including the feet and distal arms and forearms. On this slide here, we see some other examples of variants of pityriasis rosea, including acral pityriasis rosea, where there is desquamation affecting the palms. There is papyric or hemorrhagic pityriasis rosea, where we see round and oval papyric lesions affecting the neck of a young woman. There is urticarial pityriasis rosea, which present with palpable edematous erythematous lesions with a collarette scaling. There is also erythema multiforme-like pityriasis rosea, where the lesions are annular and papillar in appearance, resembling erythema multiforme. There is also papillar pityriasis rosea and follicular pityriasis rosea, as demonstrated here. On this slide, we can see vesicular pityriasis rosea, hypopigmented pityriasis rosea, as well as a pityriasis rosea-like drug rash. In this particular example, this was related to the ingestion of levothyroxine in a young gentleman, resulting in an extensive eruption affecting the trunk. The lesions are small and monomorphous. Generally speaking, the prognosis of pityriasis rosea is quite good and the lesions generally self-resolve. However, infections of pityriasis rosea in first trimester pregnancies, less than 15 weeks, may be associated with a higher risk of spontaneous abortion or premature delivery of an infant with hypotonia and hyperreactivity. Pityriasis rosea is also associated with atopy. 
In terms of the histological findings, pityriasis rosea is usually a clinical diagnosis and does not require a skin biopsy. However, in cases where, for example, the clinical variants are quite challenging or whether cases where other alternative differential diagnoses need to be ruled out, a skin biopsy may be considered. A skin biopsy of pityriasis rosea would show nonspecific features, including small mounds of parakeratosis, spongiosis, mild lymphohistiocytic perivascular and interstitial papillary dermal infiltrate, as well as mild erythrocyte extravasation, as seen here on this histological image on the right-hand side of the screen. The differential diagnosis of pityriasis rosea is quite wide. Firstly, secondary syphilis can look like this. Some differentiating features for secondary syphilis includes chancre, condyloma lata, split papules, as well as peripheral lymph adenopathy. It is, open, it is important to take a thorough history to elucidate these points. There are also drug eruptions that can mimic pityriasis rosea. These have been reported in patients receiving drugs such as angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, metronidazole and isotretinoin, as well as arsenic, bismuth, gold, barbiturates, clonidine, hydrochlorothiazide, imatinib, omeprazole, tibinafine, TNF-alpha inhibitors, NSAIDs, and multiple vaccines. A drug-induced pityriasis rosea-like eruption is often slower to resolve than the idiopathic form. The Herod patch itself or generalized eruption may resemble tinea corporis, tinea versicola, namula dermatitis. The presence of the colorette of scale the orientation of the lesions and history can help distinguish pityriasis rosea from these other differentials. Guttate psoriasis may also look similar. However, it has a thicker scale, it is smaller in size in terms of the lesions, and lacks the Christmas tree or fir tree distribution. Other papular squamous disorders, such as pityriasis lichenoides, should also be considered, especially when lesions last longer than four months. In terms of the management, because pityriasis rosea is often asymptomatic and self-limited, patient education, reassurance, represent a satisfactory treatment plan in many cases. General skincare advice, including moisturizers, use of antihistamine and natural light exposure can be provided. In patients who are symptomatic with pruritus, treatment can be initiated such as topical steroids, usually of at least moder moderate potency. In some cases, phototherapy with narrowband UVB phototherapy may be offered. In rare instances, a brief course of systemic corticosteroids may be required. There is some evidence for the use of antiviral drugs, such as acyclovir at 400 mg five times a day for a week, or at higher doses, such as 800 mg five times daily for one week, when used early it may lead to quicker resolution of lesions. There is also some evidence for oral erythromycin antibiotics, one gram four times a day for two weeks for adults, that was reported to clear the, le the lesions of pityriasis rosea within two weeks of treatment. However, the evidence is not as strong. Thank you for joining us on this video presentation today on pityriasis rosea. I hope you learned some interesting facts about this fairly common condition. I hope to see you in the next video.